So g'day guys, today we're going to talk about the three mistakes that amateurs make in producing music. G'day, my name's Steve Collum and this is The Secrets to Music Success. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the three mistakes that amateurs make when they're producing their own music or even producing music for other people. You know, it's um, there's three three keys here that I'm going to share with you today. And it's like these if you follow these ones instantly, they're so quick and they're so easy to kind of follow. And once you get them, it's just like you, all of a sudden your, your productions come to life, your your music, your singles, your recordings, they, they come to life. And it's like you're really kind of, uh, you know, you just you're setting yourself uh, above your peers and other people just by knowing these three little things. So and uh, more than that, you don't seem like an amateur or beginner anymore. So, all right, let's jump in. So, number one, don't use the same sounds like uh, let's say you've got like a uh, a guitar or something that's in that same frequency range. So let me let me take a back step. So your frequency frequency range goes from about 20 hertz. That's all the low stuff, all the big, you know, around 60 hertz is those big kick drums, the boom, the what you can really feel. You can't really hear it. You, you can kind of hear it, but you, it's more down there. So anyway, it goes from 60, uh, goes from about 20 to 20K. So, and just real quick, it's like 20, uh, 20 hertz, um, kilohertz, then it goes to 40, then it doubles, it goes to 80, then it goes to, you know, about 150, and then you go up to, all the way up to 1,000, and then you turn into the Ks, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, all the way up to 20. So 20 hertz to 20K. That's our frequency range. That's all we can hear. Now, when you're first born, um, you can hear like, you know, all the way up to like 20, 20, uh, 20K, but... Um, when as you listen to more music and as uh, you know you go to concerts and it breaks your e your hearing down and you end up you know uh you know i can only hear about uh, i did a test of it recently and i can do, i can hear about 30 30 uh kilohertz to about 17k so uh that 18 19 20 that's kind of like it's more of that air and it's 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 kind of way up there you know so you don't want to use the same kind of sounds if you've got like in a guitar and it's really that kind of like that mid-rangey kind of sound don't grab a piano that's the same mid-range because guess what they're going to be fighting for those frequencies they're going to be fighting to be heard in the mix why not pick one of them and go up an octave uh, and play something a little higher so then all of a sudden you're filling out that frequency let's just say uh, you've got one bass instrument. You fill up that low section there. You've got uh, some kick, a kick drum. It's down there somewhere around there as well. Then you've got some guitars that in, right in the middle there. Then you've got some maybe some pianos, and then you've got some uh, the percussion and 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 uh, cymbals and uh, shakers and stuff up there. So you're filling out the whole spectrum of what you would hear instead of doing percussion that's down here, uh, guitars that are down here. Um, uh, pianos that are down here and then you've got this all this space up here and then when you're mixing you're going to be fighting for those spots you're going to be like trying to EQ things you're going to be wondering why your whole mix kind of sounds like this so so that's the number one mistakes that uh that a lot of amateurs use they use that they put a lot of instruments into those same frequency ranges all right so number two is um they don't add an extra element or an extra sound, a new texture, something new every four to eight measures. It's so important to be introducing something new. I've heard so many songs and it's it's very easy to tell when, you know, it's like you've, they start the whole band. Let's say they've got 20 instruments, uh, you know, 30 instruments. They start them all at the beginning. Everything's playing at the beginning. It's like, oh, you know, the easiest thing to be doing is just stagger it every uh, you know, every four four measures, every eight measures, give something new. The bass doesn't have to come into maybe the chorus. Maybe the piano doesn't come into the second verse. Maybe uh, uh, the strings come in on just the chorus and 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 the bridge, or maybe just the bridge. Uh, maybe the synth comes in on it starts with the synth pad. Maybe you've got the uh, you got like maybe you've got a stack of kick drums, and maybe you just use one of the weak ones at the beginning, or in the verse you use a different one. You've got to constantly create these textures, introduce these new elements, and then guess what? Your ears and the listeners' ears, they're constantly like, they're like, oh, you know, you mightn't be able to pick, oh, the hi-hat changed here, or there was a, a different kick that came in here if they're slightly different. You might be able to hear that, but your ears don't get bored. You know, when the last time that you've listened to a song and you're like, and your ears are kind of like, eh, it's a bit boring, 
I guarantee it's done one of these things or it's like nothing's changed for like four measures, nothing's changed for like eight measures and you're like listening to the same thing go over and it's like, so that's a big one. Number two, you've got to make sure that you're adding a new texture, introducing a new element every four to eight measures. That's a big one. You got to remember that. All right. So let's jump into the third one now. So you've got to have complementing sounds. So it's very important that your sounds are complementing each other. And what, what do I mean by that? I'm meaning that if you've got like, uh, let's say a acoustic guitar is doing 16s, and then maybe you've got <laughs> the hi-hats, and then you've got uh, a shaker <laughs> on the 16th, and you've got like all these instruments, the worst thing for you to do with your piano, let's say you're adding a piano or a string in there or a, uh, some violins or uh, I don't know, anything, mandolin, whatever, you, whatever you're adding in there, don't add something that's just another 16th because you're not, there's no complementing sounds. A better option, and always be using, thinking about this in the back of your head as you're, as you're producing, ask yourself, like, what's another kind of sound that, uh, or what's something that's going to be complementing the other sounds? Like, uh, let's go back to that example. You got the acoustic guitars, one and a two and a, uh, and maybe a shaker. Da -ga -da -ga -da. Maybe the hats can be like, dun -t -dun -t. it'll create a different, whole different feel. And all of a sudden, you've created a room. What about you add the strings and the pads? What about they hold out some long notes? Da da. They're just holding out longer notes as the chicka 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 chick. Try those kind of things because I promise you that all of a sudden your mix is just going to get clearer and fuller. And just using just using that tip alone is really, really, really cool. I'm always thinking that. And I'm a singer-songwriter, so I'm doing that a lot, even with my melodies and even with my, um, uh, you know, with my harmonies and everything. I'm thinking about the, the bigger picture. Like, as a songwriter, you know, I'll be like, uh, you know, if in the verse I'm like, dun da da dun da da I'm singing lots of words, dun da 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 In the pre-chorus, I might go da 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 something longer, then maybe go back to the chorus, da 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 or something. So I'm constantly thinking that. And I want you to do a little exercise for me. Go and play, after you finish this video, go and play one of your favorite songs and listen to the parts. Listen how each part complements each other. Because you don't need about a thousand uh, sounds or a thousand tracks to create a song. You only need that one part. You have a listen, and a lot of your hit songs, a lot of your favorite songs, they have they don't have many instruments. But each instrument is so carefully crafted and put into the right place at the right time, and it just adds, and it's just that big, big sound, and that's. That's what you want. That's the goal that you want, you know. So keep aiming for that. And uh, so just as a recap, your first one is uh, amateurs will use the same sounds in that same frequency. They'll use the guitars or pianos. Everything's down in that same re frequency. And often a lot of the time um, when you're listening back or when you're playing, you want something real thick and real full. But guess what? When you're mixing it, you don't want that. So there's some, I'm a guitarist, and so there's so many times that I would have like a um, a guitar, and I'm like, man, that sounds big, that sounds real fat, it's real full, it's exactly like what I want. And then in the mix process, I've cut out all the lows, and it's like this thin high guitar, but it sounds so big because the bass is filling all that the section out. You've got a kick drum that's huge, and so it's filling out those sections, and then you end up with, uh, the more instruments you have, the more smaller and the frequency, if you solid some of those instruments, they don't actually sound very good by themselves. But in the mix, they sound huge and they all have their places. So amateurs, they use the same sound and the same frequency. Number two, they don't add any textures uh, every four to eight measures. They don't add new things. You know, you've got to add a new thing. You know, there's so many different tricks you can do with uh, finger snaps to make them sound a little different every four, uh, four measures or eight measures. Or just having them different all the time. So they're not just a simple the same sample every single time. So number three, um, complementing sounds. So if you've got some uh, pads or maybe even a piano, uh, don't be doing all the same thing all the time. I mean, da, 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 da. and the violins, da, 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 da. All right, guys, so uh, hopefully that's been really helpful to you. Um, go ahead over to my website at The Secrets to Music Success and download my free PDF 
Uh, there I've got there on the top 20 musical and song themes um, that music supervisors are looking for. I've got like uh, a bunch of tips on mixing and I've got a bunch of tips on uh, on pop songwriting production. So download them totally for free. Uh, I just want to help you guys out and hopefully this has been really helpful to you guys and, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.